make a positive contribution to this crazy changing world that we live in. And uh, I know, you know, the mission, the occupation that is politics gets knocked a lot. Um, but one of the things I'm always struck by is that when we have the kinds of terrible things and events that we've seen happen in recent days in Paris, people do look to their elected representatives to sort it out, to make them feel safe, to take the necessary measures. They don't really look to the media or the celebrities, they actually do look to their elected politicians. The typical answer will normally be success, but it's helping others, it's being in the position not to pull the career ladder up behind you and guide others. I feel quite privileged to be in that, in that, in that position. What drives me, um, um, it depends, work-wise, um, I guess my family drives me, and also um, hopefully the, the, giving me the, what's the word, the options to decide how my life investments are directed. I'm looking to hopefully try and do more impact investments, and so a lot of what I'm doing at the moment is Hopefully so it can give me more choice in what I actually put my investments into. Really being able to do uh, work in which um, I can fight for the things that I really believe in, particularly uh, to fight for social justice and to fight for uh, equality. Um, in the last time I had of the United Nations, I was able, I hope, to give a voice to people who uh, were not able uh, themselves because they were drives me. The ability to affect change or inspire younger people in the way that I was inspired when I was a child. When I was a child, um, I used to go to Queen's Crescent Library in Camden where I grew up and there was a man called Lord Eric who would read us stories and he would get so into telling the story that um, I'd look around and the whole class would be captivated by him. And I, something in me my walk, my calling, which is acting and movie making and working in the theatre, I want to be able to touch young people in that way and touch their hearts and make them hopefully see their aspirations, whether it is being in the movie business or whether it's becoming a doctor, a lawyer, or being in the RAF, to, to know that that's a reality, that people that look like them, that come from the places that they come from, can achieve the things that they dream of. I think two things drive me. I, as everybody I think has ever listened to me talk about this knows, I want to do well. So my mother made me always try to do my very best. So doing well is important. So I, I'm equally driven by a desire to help other people. And so I want to give back. And so I've got these twin engines really of doing well and doing good. feel sorry for myself and then I say just keep on going my mantra is always keep on going no matter what uh, and I do think that's the secret to success is keeping going I'm an optimist and I always think out of adversity you learn it makes you better it makes you more formidable and enables you to deal with future challenges so that you go on and succeed so you know the start of success is often failure you know what, yeah, I've always had a goal, a central goal in mind that allows me to focus, especially when you trip up, when you fall, which, you know, allows me to persevere, and as the Americans call it, grit, allows me to focus on grit, which is perseverance and resilience, and you have that one dream in your head, which kind of facilitates the journey that you're on. So as long as I continue to have that dream in my head, it doesn't matter how many times I trip up, I'll always be able to bounce it. As long as you've got a good team and network of people around you, good family, if you're ever disappointed about anything, like everyone in life is at some point, you'll always have people to just pick you back up. Well, I think it's really important to see, to see setbacks as learning. It's hard to accept. I mean, I'm not the kind of person that really deals well with setbacks because I really like to move on and 
always looking for solutions. So for me, uh, a setback is an opportunity to really look again at what I'm trying to do, uh, to treat it as you know, not as an immovable uh, setback, but as something that I need to think differently about how to get around something. It depends on the disappointment. If it's my own failure, then I try to learn from the lessons and I think that's a big message for everybody. If it's somebody else who's done me harm, I put their name in my little book and wait for the chance to get my own back. I uh, overcome a disappointment, I work harder, uh, I think more and uh, I spend more time with my family. That's always a, a good way to overcome disappointment. Well, in my business, bouncing back from a disappointment is something that you have to learn to be able to do. I think, um, for me, I have the knowledge in my mind that what is for you will not go by you. So if one task or one job opportunity doesn't work, in my mind, somewhere in the back of my mind, I know that that wasn't for me. And the one that is for me will come to pass. What's for you won't go by you. As long as you have that in your mind, shoot for the stars and you will definitely hit something. Because there are a billion stars out there, you're sure to get one. mentor, a 92-year-old gentleman in Boston called Norman Knight, who's a big philanthropist, who taught me the real joy of major giving.